Good evening. Welcome to the Pearl Report. I'm Diana Lin. Under an integrated education policy in local schools, students with special education needs such as autism and dyslexia are placed in the same classes as mainstream students. But as producer Alex Solim finds, many schools don't want these SEN students because they might lower overall academic performance. And some schools misuse subsidies earmarked for these pupils, while some parents say mainstream schools don't live up to their promises to help special needs kids. When Angela Chiu's son Marco turned two, she took him to an interview at a kindergarten. They said, what is this? Showed him a picture. What is this? Marco, not interesting. Four kindergartens rejected him. They won't accept him because he won't talk. So he refers him to the Child Assessment Centre to get to have an evaluation. The whole process took a year, during which Angela sent Marco to a private kindergarten. The level of speech is only one year, eight months, which is very behind, and autism symptoms. The government then found him a place in the kindergarten for children with special educational needs, or SEN. It gave him speech therapy and a psychologist to help him with social skills. Marco is now in primary two in a government Ban 3 school in Tin Shui Wai. At the very beginning, he was so nervous all the time because he did not know how to get along with the others. OK, let's pick. You can put it down a bit. OK, this. You, you put it down. Does, does he pick it? on his messes out of the room. And that's it, that's it. Could I make something? So the teacher gives him extra attention. He starts to um, use it to our school environment. And he learned a lot of social skills and emotional control skills. Schools sometimes put SEN pupils in the front rows. Pointer, okay, so you're pointed using the pointer, okay? Okay. And there are after-school activities to improve his English language skills. I can't say it's good by car. I think I chose him correctly. The first day of primary two, the teacher called me and said, anything that I need to concentrate on Marco. The government started placing SEN children in local schools in 1997. In the past, we have special ed provisions in the mainstream school, for example, the uh, special class for slow learners. But we found that there may be labeling effect for the students. And therefore, after 1997, we start the trial of the integration program in Hong Kong mainstream schools. You can color the picture just like Marco, okay? Schools encourage teachers to take additional courses in helping pupils with SEN. There are a lot of resources and training programs and our school principal strongly advise all of our teachers to attend that courses. To pay for the additional costs of teaching SEN children, integrated education schools like Marcos get an annual subsidy of up to 1.5 million Hong Kong dollars. It gets another 160,000 for speech therapy. And the Community Care Fund offers 460,000 annually for three years. More than 20% of the students in Marco's school have special educational needs. But many schools are reluctant to enroll too many SEN students. If you search these schools' websites, you seldom find mention of support for SEN students and special learning disabilities. There were it, many SEN students' parents would choose their schools and pull down their academic performance. And mainstream parents often prefer to send their children elsewhere. Some parents may complain right, about the safety of the children. Also, that um, the teaching schedule may be delayed. The performance of children may adversely affect it. With Hong Kong's falling birth rate, the Education Bureau has been closing down primary schools with low student numbers. The EDB will go to the school and then count the students. If, if you still can't get more students, then, well, the EDB may ask you to close the school. SEN students in this environment really has no place. Um, the Ban 1 schools don't need them. 
the band two schools don't want them. The band three schools welcome them because they're short of student supply. Resulting in SEN students enrolling in large numbers in the weakest schools. The facility is very old. The quality of students that we take in isn't high. We don't bad applicants. After graduating with a fine arts degree, Carol was hired by a band three school last summer as a teaching assistant to help minority children who struggle with Chinese. It ended up I was in charge of SEN students. Even though she's never been trained to handle children with learning disabilities. Uh, the student I met in the first day of my work is a high degree of autism. And she's frightened. I feel like I'm talking with a person in the outer space. One of five SEN children in the class. I don't think I'm good for him because I'm not professional. I did mention this problem to the teacher and she said you only have to control him, not to scream, not to disrupt the lesson uh, and make sure he won't hurt the student. This is the first priority. Carol says the school hired five teaching assistants, but the others mostly did office work. The other one, she talked with the mainland parents on phone or after school, but because she can't speak fluent Cantonese and she can't go in the classroom. But after working in this school, I feel so sick. Where did the money go? The resources are wrongly allocated. Carol quit after finding a job as an arts teacher. When integrated education was introduced in 1997, the number of SEN primary school students was 13,720. It's now over 17,000. In 2003, the Education Bureau introduced a new funding system. Psychologists assess SEN students to fit into three tiers of severity. A school with integrated education gets $13,400 annually for each Tier 2 student and $26,800 for each Tier 3 child. Fernando Cheung heads LegCo's subcommittee on integrated education. The problem with this three-tier funding system is the lack of transparency. Are the schools utilizing this money? We don't even know how many students belong to Tier 1, 2, 3. We've asked EDB about that. A question as simple as that cannot be answered. When probed by the LegCo Finance Committee, the Education Bureau replied, The level of support of students with SEN may be adjusted from time to time according to the performance of the students. Hence, we are unable to provide the distribution of students in each tier. The funding is allocated to school and the purposes is up to the school's discretion. Raising concerns that funding is used for other than SEN purposes. Of course, in the report right, or in the meeting between parents and teachers, okay, we will always say that right, we, hire ex we hire extra teacher or teacher assistant, but indeed, yeah, most of the time they allocate to other duties. Especially when a school is threatened with closure. They can use the fundings to uh, buy better resources and renovate their campus and hope to get more students. That may help them to survive. Leah Kat was born in Hong Kong to parents from Pakistan. Now age 10, he can communicate in Cantonese, but he is behind his peers in every academic subject. When Leah Kat was in primary one, he was assessed to have a mild intellectual disability, placing him in tier one. He's blank, he doesn't know anything. Sakina says she couldn't get special help for her tier one child. They say the education department doesn't have any, any resources for the kids like your, your kids. So the school could not cope. Principal called me. Your child is very naughty. He cannot control himself. He's running in the corridor. Please pick him up from school right away and bring 
him back home. Teaching staff in a school may not have training in dealing with SEN students. Just for one SEN student in a classroom may extract all the energy of the teachers. The government requires 15% of teachers in integrated education schools to be trained in helping SEN students. But the mandatory course is only 30 hours. It's just an introduction. The needs of the ADHD, the special learning disabilities, the dyslexia, every kind is unique and has their own different sets of needs. The result is you would have many of these SEN students simply sitting there. Constant pressure from Leah Katz's school led Sakina to quit her job. I don't think there is any, uh, any kind of employer going to employ me because of this. With Sakina's consent, a government assessment center transferred Leakat in primary two to a school for intellectually disabled children, where he says he feels depressed and isolated. Can he go back to a normal school? They say we can try our best maybe to uh, put in a like upper waiting list grade, but. We cannot promise anything. I don't know, they just give me a skills or uh, day by day his age is going up, but he does nothing. English is not good, Chinese is not good, so what will be his future? Coming up after the break, is the long waiting time for assessment making children lag behind? I cried as I talked to the principal. Maybe they feared I'd commit suicide. A law to secure the rights of SEN students just set explicitly well, what each school need. That and more when we return. Welcome back to the Per Report. In Hong Kong, most children with special education needs are placed in mainstream schools. The government provides guidelines for the schools, but there's no legislation, as in some countries, to protect the rights of SEN kids. Would they fare better with laws? At the age of two, while attending a mainstream kindergarten, Snowy Choi's son Kindred was diagnosed with autism and speech delay at a child assessment centre. At age six, when he was about to enter primary school, he was assessed again by an educational psychologist. The evaluation found my son could study in a mainstream school, but he'd need professional support. Kindred started showing signs of dyslexia. Starting in primary school, children had to do frequent dictations and memorize vocabulary. When they can't do it, emotional problems arise. The educational psychologist said further assessment had to wait. He said my son was still small. We could wait and see how it'd go. Wait until the school complains about his behavior first. Snowy arranged for a private assessment, which was rejected by the school principal. The school said the report must be done by an educational psychologist. I cried as I talked to the principal. He took the initiative to talk to the educational psychologist. Maybe they feared I'd commit suicide. After complaining, the assessment was fast-tracked. I now realize it was due to scarce resources that they used some excuse to delay the assessment. From being on the waiting list to actually seeing an educational psychologist and confirming the assessment, it would take two to four years. In the process, the psychologist misses many developmental aspects, so it's harder to change and improve the kid's condition. In 2014, a LegCo subcommittee report on integrated education urged the government to take practicable steps to shorten the waiting time for assessment of SEN students. In the chief executive's policy address this year, Leung Chen Ying said there will be more educational psychologists, one for every four local schools. When Kindred was finally assessed, his school made some adjustments. For example, he might be given less dictation or told some content earlier. They offered to read test questions to him. 
The Education Bureau encourages schools to adjust the curriculum to suit the abilities of SEN students. Actually, only a few schools can do that. Those schools enroll many SEN students and make a lot of effort. The LegCo subcommittee has also recommended Hong Kong introduce an education law. We reviewed a lot of laws in other uh, countries. Taiwan, where 90% of SEN students are in mainstream schools, has a law to give them minimum rights. All SEN students are taught and dealt with by SCN teachers in the resource class. In 1975, the United States passed a law stating that every child with special educational needs has to have an individualized education program. The IEP becomes a contract that provides for um, a very strong basis for everybody to stick to that multidisciplinary assessment together with the parents and the students to serve that SEN students. A report by the Subcommittee for Integrated Education shows that not more than 5% of Hong Kong's SEN students get individual education plans. The Education Bureau only requires school to provide IEPs for Tier 3 students, the most severe cases. For extra incentive, a school with only one Tier 3 child still gets enough to help six Tier 3 SEN children. Over 160,000 Hong Kong dollars. So all the school will try to get that for the resources of the school. Well, because we only need to submit one IEP. Each IEP, um, it is tailor-made for the Tier 3 SEN students and then all the teachers who, uh, uh, who is teaching the, these students need to be involved. And therefore the IEP may be very costly. But they have to maintain some level to get that funding. So they only submit one IEP. Chan believes only legislation can help ensure that all Tier 3 students receive the IEP. For now, the Education Bureau says... EDB's professional officers conduct regular school visits to monitor and provide consultation for the schools. To ensure their SEN kids get better treatment, some parents choose costly private schools. Like the Ao Poi School in Hong Ham. It charges 20,000 Hong Kong dollars a month and specializes in teaching autistic children using applied behavioral therapy. Now you are sitting nicely, Tyler. Tyler, come up. Can I? Yeah. I want you to ride. I know how to ride. Yeah, I want you to ride kitchen. Again. Again. What are you talking about? I don't want to ride kitchen again. Tyler, who's been diagnosed with autism, transferred here in August from a mainstream school. I remember the first day, he, he was so excited, he was so curious about everything. This is your cubby. So every day, you have to put your backpack here. Do that. But we have some difficulty when we started to work with him. Tyler didn't react very well in a situation like when he is not a winner. So after that, we set up the goal for him, how to help him to tolerate working with a challenging task, even something he doesn't know. So he will not get upset when he needs to ask for help. Hey Tyler, that was nice. You know, if you know the answer, you can ask your friend to help. And learning to cooperate with other students. All of this became Tyler's individual education plan. We met his parents and then we explained to them what are the goals that we are going to work on in the following three months. Within a few weeks, you can see that he improved, he made changes, he started to get used to the routine more quickly. He sits down every night now and he does his homework with minimal supervision and he does it all the way through to completion. Any reservations we had about him going to an autism specialist school probably within two weeks were just 
were, were gone when, when we saw the improvement that he'd made. Karina Tan runs the support group for parents of children with learning disabilities. Very first thing usually is denial. There's no problem with my kids. So what we do is we tell them know how to um, encourage your kids to learn and how to learn more effectively. And then you learn how to communicate with other people, for example, the school. Karina's son, Leon, has dyslexia. He has this left-right reversal issue. So it means that he will have problem recognizing the Chinese words. And writing them down. Both because of um, his problem with the retrieval of information from his mind and with his fine motor skills. His school helped out, including reading out exam questions for Leon. For Chinese words, they have a lot of copyings to do, right? I recommend them to let me copy half of the word and then let uh, my son put in the other half. Karina also arranges after-school activities to improve his socializing skills, such as joining the Boy Scouts. Karina advises parents with SEN children to actively look for a school that really does cater to their needs. It really depends on how willing the teachers themselves they want to learn about SEN. There are a lot of Ben Wan schools who only want um, their kids to have good results in DSE. I, my son can never go into that kind of school. And she sees integrated education as a good preparation for her son's future. The future world is integrated. I don't want him to isolate himself. I want him to be part of the society like anyone. Well, thank you for watching our show. It will be re-aired on Monday and Saturday, as well as on TVB.com. Until next time, from the Pearl Report team, good night, good luck and good health.